Hello, great solves. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be uh, talking about the fundamental counting principle. It's basically the last topic in Gretzow's mathematics. All right, let's start the fundamental counting principle. Now, you have to understand what is the fundamental counting principle. All right, so the fundamental counting principle says it, it helps us to determine the total number of different choices. The total number of different choices that are there in a particular situation. So you might find some definition may say the fundamental counting principle, it helps us to determine the total number of different combinations that are there in a particular situation. Some definition may say the fundamental counting principle, it helps us to determine the total number of unique arrangements that can be made in different situations. All right, so, okay. How 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 do we use the fundamental counting principle? Okay, it says if there are m ways of choosing a certain option in a particular event, and in another one there are n ways of choosing uh, uh, another options, then there is a total of m times n choices for that situation. So this is called the fundamental counting principle. It helps us to determine the total number of different choices that are there in a particular situation. Like I said, it can also help us to determine the total number of different arrangements that can be made in a particular situation. It can also help us to determine the total number of unique combinations that can be made. So this is the fundamental counting principle. How do we use it? If there are M ways in a particular situation, and there are n ways in another situation, then there is a total of m times n choices that are there in, in that particular event or situation. So this is called the fundamental counting principle, all right? So let, let us now explore the fundamental counting principle in another way. Or, or we can say the fundamental counting principle can be seen in, in this way. So they're saying under event A, if we have certain number of outcomes and under event B, if we have certain number of outcomes, oh, we, we, we are naming them N of B, then under event A, we are naming them N of A to show that there are certain number of outcomes in event A and there are certain number of outcomes in event B. Then using the fundamental counting principle, if you want to determine the total number of outcomes that are there in, 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 in both uh, this, uh, this uh, situation or in, in, in both these events, combining these two events, then there will be a total of N A multiplied by N B outcomes for the combination of event A and B. So we call that the fundamental counting principle. And what you can notice here from the fundamental counting principle is that if we want to determine the certain number of, to, the total number of choices that are there in, in a particular situation, we simply multiply the outcomes that are there in those kind of situation, all right? So let us now explore this principle looking at, uh, uh, at the following example. All right, so it says, if John is to answer both questions, in how many different ways can he answer? So we have question one and we have question two. All right, so that they're, they're saying John is given a question paper, here is it? It has question one and question two. If he has to answer both questions, in how many different ways can he answer? All right, in question one, we have how many choices? That is the question that you must consistently ask yourself when answering fundamental counting principle question, because we multiply the number of choices to determine the total number of choices that are there in a particular situation. We multiply the number of outcomes to determine the total number of combinations that can be made. We multiply the total number 
of outcomes, also to determine the total number of arrangements that can be made in a particular situation. But in this case, we want to uh, determine in how many different ways can John answer this question paper if he is given this question paper with two questions, question one, question two. So using the fundamental counting principle is going to be very simple. So we simply say, OK, in question one, how many outcomes are there? John can either choose true, John can either choose false, John can either say, I don't know. So he has how many different ways of answering question one? There are only three ways. So that is uh, what we place there. So let's come to, see, to, to case two now, okay? Let's come to case two. My pen is just not writing properly. Let me just put it properly. Oh, it's now disappointing me. Sorry for this. Uh, let's see. Let's try this again. Great. So let's come to question two. In question two, John how may have how many choices? He can either say true or he can either say false. So he has two ways of answering question two. So in total, if he has to answer this question paper that has two questions, in how many different ways can he answer? So there is three times two, which is six ways. So John can answer this question paper in six different ways. So we got this from the fundamental counting principle. You just check how many choices do I have in the first question? How many ways can you answer in the second question? Then you multiply those outcomes. Then they will give you the total number of ways in which you can answer this question paper. So this is the fundamental counting principle. All right. So let us now look at another example. You are given a menu below when entering a restaurant. You are required to select one item for each section. So, and B, you are required to select one item for each section. All right. So, there are the starters. We have the main course and the dessert. So, what is the question? If a person is to buy from all these categories from this store, yeah, just from this store, how many total combinations are there for him or her to make? All right. How many combinations can a person make if he is to go and buy from this store? Okay. Now, we are going to use the fundamental counting principle to determine how many number of combinations that can be made. Remember, a person is required to select one from each of these categories. All right, from the status, how many choices that does a person have? That is a question you must consistently ask yourself when attempting to answer fundamental counting principle questions. How many choices do we have for status? A person can choose his name, a person can choose oysters, a person can choose buffalo wings, a person can choose cocktail sausages. So how many choices are there? One, two, three, four. We have four choices. So let's go to the main course. In the main course, a person can choose a lamb steak, a person can choose prawn curry, or a person can choose pearl. So how many choices are there? One, two, three. We have three choices. Sorry, sorry, sorry about this. We have three choices. Great. Now, let's go to the dessert. A person can choose chocolate mousse. A person can choose strawberry cheesecake. How many choices are there? One, two, two choices. According to the fundamental counting principle, how many different combinations can this person make? We multiply out those number of choices that we have. So it's four times three times two, which will give us four times three is 12 times two, it's 24. So there will be 24 different combinations, combinations, combinations that a person can make. So it's 24 different combinations in total that this person can make if he's going to buy in this store. 
So you, you can see that fundamental country principle, we can use it in real life. We can use it in real life um, uh, to actually uh, determine uh, this number of combinations. And, and it can be helpful a lot to see maybe if someone is organizing a party and, and, and maybe they, they have sort of different um, kind of um, menus there, then they, they can, uh, okay, they can actually uh, produce to say, okay, we have 24 different combinations. So we have 24 different people who prefer to eat 24, I mean, different kind of food. So in total, we have 24, so it's balanced, so you see. So we can actually use fundamental counting principle in real world too, um, in, in those kind of cases, all right? Let us now look at uh, this other example. It's quite different. So they say a teacher wants to sit, or oh, this one, let me just name it example three, example number three. A teacher wants to seat four girls and three boys in a row of seven seats. So we have seven seats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The first seat must have a girl and the last seat must have a boy. The first seat must have a girl. Now we are restricted. In the first seat, there must no there must be no boy, but we have to have a girl. So no boy must sit there. So let's just use G to represent that in the first seat we want a girl. And the last seat must be a boy. Okay, we go to the last seat, there must be a boy. Let me just use B. In how many ways can the teacher seat these students? Okay, if the first seat must have a girl, it means it is fixed. No boy is needed in that seat. There must only be girls. So what is the question that we ask ourselves when answering fundamental counting principle questions? How many choices of girls do we have to choose from that we can place in the first city? That is the question you ask yourself. How many choices of girls do we have that we can place, we can sit here in the first seat? So that is the question you ask yourself when answering this question. So let's go and see. We have four girls, all right? This pen is, is now, sorry about this. Let me just uh, give it some time. And uh, let's see now. Okay, great. Okay, we have four girls. We have four girls. So in the first seat, how many choices do we have? Okay, let me just, uh, to, to, to make sure you understand this, let me just say, I represent these girls in this way. We have girl one, girl two, girl three, and girl number four. So girl one can be chosen to sit there, right? Or we can choose girl two to sit there, or we can choose girl three to sit there, or even girl four can be chosen to sit there. So in total, we have how many choices of girls that we can choose from to sit in the first seat? We have four choices. All right, let's go to, uh, to, to the last position. There must be a boy. We have three boys. Let me just name the boy one, boy two, and boy three. We can choose boy one to sit there. We can choose boy two to sit there, or we can actually choose boy three to sit there. We have how many choices of boys? We have three choices, so it's three. Now we are left with uh, these positions in the middle. We are left with these positions here in the middle. All right, so what you have to think now, in the first position, there, there's going to be a girl. In the last position, there's going to be a boy. So in total, we have removed two people. Two people have already seated from a total of how many people? Three plus four, which is seven, from, from seven people. Because a girl must be seated there, a boy must be seated. From seven people, we have removed two people. How many people are left that we can choose from in this position? We are left with five people. 
All right, right? We're left with five people. So remember, when you answer fundamental counting principle, you must always be thinking about the number of choices you have in that particular situation. Now we have chosen one, two, three. That is how you answer this question. You have filled up, this space is filled with a person, this place filled with another person, this place is filled with another person. From seven people, you have now removed three people. How many people are left? Four people. From seven people, you now removed one, one, two, three. Okay. Let me just. Uh, sorry. Yo, oh, it's now very, very short. Okay. Let me just do like this. Sorry about this. Yeah. So now. We have removed one, two, three, four people. Now we removed four people. One, two, three, four. We have removed four people from seven people. How many people are left that we can choose from? Three people. Like that, we have removed five people, two people left, and one person is left. So to get the answer of that, we simply use a calculator. You multiply all those things. So when you multiply, I may choose to say four multiply by five times four times three times two times one, it will give us 120 multiply by three and simply use a calculator. We get 1440 uh, ways in which a teacher can sit these students. So there is a total of 1,140 different ways in which a teacher can seat these students. Great, I think this marks the end of our lesson. Remember that these resources were adapted from Vodacom eSchool. You will get uh, the link in the description down below the video. You can simply go to www.vodacom.co.za slash e-school and register. These resources are there. Let me just give you a quick summary of what we did today. Okay, we talked about the fundamental counting principle and we highlighted uh, that uh, the fundamental counting principle happens to determine the total number of different choices that are there in a particular situation. I also said the fundamental counting principle happens to determine the total number of different arrangements of different arrangements, arrangements, arrangements that can be made uh, in, in, in particular situation. I also said that fundamental counting principle can help us to determine the total number of uh, different combinations, the total number of different combinations that can be made in, uh, in, 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 in particular situation. So how do we do this? We say if there are M ways in a particular situation and N ways of choosing another option in another particular situation, then there will be a total of M times N choices for that situation. So we simply multiply out the number of outcomes that we have in those particular situation. All right. So we also said the fundamental content principle can be seen in the following way. Under event A, if there will be number of outcomes in that event and under event B, we have certain number of outcomes in that event, then a total uh, number of combinations of event A and B will be the multiplication of the total number of outcomes in those different um, um, uh, events. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, and hit the notification bell so that you may be notified every time when I upload a video. Thank you.